After saying goodbye to the Jamil family, many days have passed. So we see Ryoma runs a successful business with his laundry. Ryoma slowly became known as the top G of laundry in the city of Gimel. Then he went to his bamboo forest laundry. Ryoma looked after his nice employees, who took good care of his business. All slimes and workers worked diligently, and they all greeted Ryoma. Later, Ryoma was admonished by Carla for working too much. She said that he should take care of himself and schedule his time for himself. Ryoma also learned that the new employees had little work experience. Ryoma was surprised to hear that and decided to let his employees do more work in the future. Suddenly, they heard a commotion and Li Ling tied up two guys. Ryoma then learned that they were trying to cause trouble. That's how we see the guys. They complained that their laundry was dirty. They showed their clean clothes and the customers laughed at them. They became aggressive and Li Ling tied up the two scammers. Then Ryoma looked at a window and he had an idea to increase the security of his laundry. Following this, Ryoma went into the Gimel mine and he used the support of his sticky slimes. His sticky slimes filled a container with slime and Ryoma magically drained the water content of the slime several times. As a result, Ryoma created a bulletproof glass pane, so Ryoma was protected from a drive-by. Then Ryoma used his sticky slimes to create more glass panes. In the evening, Ryoma got tired, but suddenly he noticed a new evolved slime. Ryoma learned that he had received a medicine slime. Ryoma wondered why a poison slime had evolved. Then he remembered dropping a medicine the day before. One of his slimes drank the medicine and he transformed into a new type of slime. Ryoma then fed more poison slimes with medicine. Followed then, his new slime showed him how to produce medicine. So Ryoma was amazed that his slime could produce high quality medicine. Then he took a closer look at his created medicine and he realized that he got some disinfectant. As a result, Ryoma was prepared for the next corona wave. After that, Ryoma decided to visit the gods soon, since he hadn't seen them for a long time. Later, we see Ryoma in the church, and he went to the magic crystal ball. Followed Ryoma was sent to the realm of the gods and he met an unknown god. This is how Ryoma got to know the god Takun. He was the god of crafts and trades. Then Ryoma discovered the dolls that he made for his friend Eliaria. Takun got a liking for his dolls, and he copied them. Afterwards, Ryoma told his story that he was teleported from Earth to the other world. Tekun was impressed by Ryoma, and he wanted to learn his crafts from Ryoma in his old life. He also praised Ryoma for his great craftsmanship, and Ryoma told him more about his passion. Then Ryoma learned that there are other gods. Additionally, he learned that the white space is connected to his world. Because of the connection, Ryoma can always visit the gods. Then Ryoma found out about the god of magic and learning. He was a god who rarely shows himself but Felnovilia is very smart and knows almost everything about the world. After that, Ryoma was sent back to his world. Back in the church, Ryoma said goodbye to the receptionist and decided to go to his laundry. However, he arrived and Carla reported to Ryoma that they had no further problems in the laundry. Then Ryoma talked about his bulletproof glass panes because he didn't want criminals to break into his laundry. Following this, Ryoma showed his bulletproof glass panes to his employee Li Ling, who tested breaking the glass pane. Meanwhile, Carla and Callum were impressed by the sturdiness of his glass pane. Faye then suggested to his daughter that she should try to destroy the glass pane with enhancement magic. So Li Ling loved Ryoma's created glass pane, but it had disadvantages, because they couldn't escape from inside of the laundry. So they decided that a few windows wouldn't be replaced with the special glass. After that, Ryoma was reminded of his conversation with Serge, and Carla also wanted to talk to Ryoma about the second branch. She said that he is a top G and should definitely open a second branch. However, top G Ryoma met with Serge to start new business. Serge told him that he can ask for help from the merchant's guild when selling medicine. So Ryoma visited the guild master Galesa. He then presented her with the medicine he had produced, and Galesa was impressed that he can mix Sprite with it to create purple drank now. Then Galesa asked when Ryoma plans to open a second laundry. Also, she said that the merchant guild will support him everywhere if he has troubles to set up. Later, Ryoma thought deeply about the second laundry, and he got a letter from his crush Eliaria. Eliaria then reported that they arrived safely in the capital. She told Ryoma that everyone is healthy, and she takes good care of his slimes. Ryoma was happy to read Eliaria's letter, so Ryoma was encouraged, and he decided to take courage to open a second laundry. In the days that followed, Ryoma showed his employees self-defense, so Ryoma was thrown with fruits. Ryoma tried to play fruit ninja, and he realized his stick wasn't sharp enough to cut the fruits. Ryoma then showed Guildmaster Taylor of the Taming Guild his slimes. He thanked Ryoma for showing him his awesome cleaner slimes. 
Suddenly an angry man was causing trouble in the laundry. He complained to Ryoma that his shirt was torn. Ryoma knew the customer was lying and he calls his cleaner slimes over to prove they're innocent. Then Ryoma revealed that his cleaner slimes don't have claws or teeth. As a result, Ryoma was able to uncover the lies of the scammer. Suddenly he got angry when his lies were discovered. So the man tried to attack Ryoma. Ryoma is a top G and he knew how to treat a scammer. Following this, Ryoma displayed his monster power and overwhelmed the man. The scammer was later arrested and Carla thought it suspicious that someone else had tried to cause problems again. Ryoma was worried about his laundry, but Carla said that Callum is trying to figure out the cause of the troublemakers. After that, Ryoma met his friend Asagi. He was happy to see Ryoma. Then Ryoma noticed Asagi's katana sword. Ryoma wanted to know more about his sword. Asagi then said that he can get the katana swords from the capital, but they are very expensive. Followed Asagi said he gets his sword for free from his family. Then Asagi asked if Ryoma can handle katana swords. However, Ryoma replied that his grandpa had taught him swordsmanship. In the afternoon, Ryoma decided to make his own katana sword. Ryoma then attempted to cast iron sand and charcoal into a sword blade, but he was unfamiliar with the manufacturing process. Suddenly he remembered that he have a spear, so he pulled the weapon out of his item box. Ryoma knew some technique to swing a spear, but he wanted a katana as his weapon. This is how he remembered his childhood, when Ryoma made weapons with his father. Also, he learned how to use many weapons. Ryoma then discovered a secret function of his spear, but he preferred a normal sword. The next day, Ryoma learned that his laundry's problems were caused by a faction war against the merchant's guildmaster. Taylor wanted humans to coexist with Monster, but evil organizations wanted to prevent it. Ryoma wanted to help Taylor solve the problems. In the evening, Ryoma checked on his new employees, who came from the Tamer's Guild. They were slime researchers, and were happy to work for Ryoma and research his veils. Then Ryoma found out that their previous company treated them previous badly and the working conditions were unbearable. Ryoma was surprised that slime research wasn't really funded. Afterwards, Ryoma also learned that the slime researchers couldn't develop new types of slimes. Ryoma was a slime expert and he told them about the evolution of slimes. However, the slime researchers were surprised that the slimes develop into different types of slime from different foods. They then wanted to learn more about slimes from Ryoma and they talked about slimes together. In the evening Ryoma was on his way home, but he was being followed by several men. Ryoma immediately ran away and he was attacked by someone. Following this, Ryoma teleports to a rooftop and he summons his Lamour birds from his home dimension spell. Then the criminals were attacked by Ryoma and he defeated them instantly. Following Ryoma wanted to know the motives of their actions and a criminal tried to sneak attack Ryoma with a monster. Ryoma's Lamour birds were able to protect him in time. Guildmaster Worgen then appeared and rushed to Ryoma's aid. As a result, the criminals were arrested by a group of knights. The next day, Ryoma told his employees about the criminals' deeds. Ryoma said that they shouldn't be more careful when knights fell on. After that, Ryoma met with the three guildmasters, and Ryoma learned that an evil man gave the order to attack his laundry. Then Galesa suggested Ryoma to use his power to lure the enemies into a trap. The following evening, Ryoma went chasing the criminals like Batman, and he immediately caught a lot of criminals. Ryoma cooperated with the knights and he healed the bandits after the fights. The reason was Galesa had the idea that Ryoma heals the injured with his slimes. As a result, the criminals would have to pay for the medical expenses, so they would learn not to mess with Top G Ryoma. Ryoma was a real hustler and got a big reward from a knight for his great help by fighting the criminals. In the days that followed, Ryoma practiced self-defense against criminals with the girls again. Also, Ryoma had a new security guard for his laundry. Dolce was recommended by Jeff, who is working now as the new bodyguard. After that there was lunch, and Ryoma was amazed about the delicious bread. The girls were also happy about the delicious lunch, and they all enjoyed the time together. Ryoma laughed with his friends, and he was happy to have a good time with everyone. The next day, Carla showed him the profits of his laundry. The sales have doubled again, and Carla also said that the three slime researchers do a great job in his business. Afterwards. Ryoma visited Gilesa again, and she showed him potential real estate for his second laundry. Following this, Ryoma received a letter from Eliaria. She told him that she is diligently preparing for her school, and that she is making progress in using magic. She also thanked him again for teaching her the bubbly water spell. After that we see Ryoma he was ready to open his second laundry, and he went on a journey to another town. In the days that followed, Ryoma wrote a letter to his crush Eliaria. 
Eliaria learned that Ryoma will open a second laundry. She was impressed by Ryoma. Meanwhile, Ryoma arrived in a new town. Ryoma was amazed by the beautiful town Lenef. Ryoma had a letter from Galesa. She sent him to see a person named Piora Sayonji. Then Ryoma discovered the merchant company Sayonji. Ryoma was impressed with Piora's business. Suddenly Miyabi spoke to him and asked if she could help him. Afterwards, Ryoma said that he is looking for Piora, and Ryoma learned that Piora is her father. Later Piora also appeared. He was teasing his daughter. He asked if Ryoma had seduced her. Ryoma then introduced himself and showed Piora his letter. So Piora said he will help him to open his second laundry in their town. Miyabi was shocked and couldn't believe that a little boy want to open her own business. Then Miyabi found out that Ryoma is a year younger than her. She was amazed, but apologized for her rude reaction. Followed Ryoma was looking forward to their time together, and Piora teased his daughter a bit again. After that, Ryoma learned that Piora is a great businessman, who has a great sense of humor. Later he led Ryoma to the guild. He said on the way to the guild that he already took care of most of the paperwork for him. Ryoma was very grateful that all he had to do was sign and read the contracts. Then Ryoma was amazed that the merchant guild is very magnificent. Following Piora told that the trader's guild is a fortress. In addition, Piora told that all the guilds of the city are gathered in this fortress. Following this, Ryoma found out about a dragon guild, and Piora told him to look out the window. Ryoma was able to see many dragons, and learned that the dragons can transport goods and people. Also, Piora told him that all the guilds work together, and they make the whole city shine. Piora said that one of his ancestors came up with the whole system, and his ancestor appointed the airport system. Ryoma was surprised that Piora's ancestor is also a reincarnated human from Earth. After the merchant guild registration in the city of Lanaf, Piora showed him his future property. Ryoma then thanked him for his big help, and Piora immediately wanted to show him the rooms of his new laundry. Then the two looked at the rooms, and Ryoma wanted to send a message to his managers. Followed then, Ryoma summoned his limor bird, and he flew to Gimel with a letter. After that, Piora offered Ryoma to sleep at his house. He said that he can prepare himself for a delicious dinner. Ryoma was very happy, because he had only eaten disgusting-tasting provisions for several days. Next we see them on lunch, Miyabi served miso soup with rice. Ryoma was surprised by the Japanese dishes, and he was happy that he could buy soy sauce too. After that, Ryoma started eating the Japanese dishes, and he enjoys the delicious food. Suddenly, Miyabi said that she is happy to see his childish side, because he behaves very grown up towards others. Then Piora teased his daughter, and said she could learn a lot from Ryoma. Then Ryoma found out that Miyabi had to go to school in the capital soon. After dinner Ryoma told that he is an E-rank adventurer. He was planning to complete quests the next day. Miyabi and Piora then warned him that many strong D-rank monsters are currently causing problems. As a result, few E-rank adventurers are in town, and there are hardly any quests for E-rank adventurers. Ryoma then recalled that the gods told him about strong monsters. Also Ryoma lived in the dangerous forest, and he used to fight against strong monsters. Suddenly, Ryoma said that he would like to fight against some smash boars. Following Piora was happy that he is motivated to fight against the monsters. The reason is Piora wanted to sell the meat of the smash boar. Then Miyabi was angry with her father for encouraging Ryoma to put himself in danger. Piora was lectured by his daughter, and he asked Ryoma for help. The next day, Miyabi accompanied him to get materials for his furniture. Later, Piora stopped by Ryoma's new property. He only saw slimes working for Ryoma. He was shocked, and his daughter was shocked too. Then the two asked what Ryoma is doing. They couldn't believe his slimes could build the furniture for him. In the afternoon, Ryoma went to do quests, and Miyabi told him to take care of himself. Below we see Ryoma, he was sad, as there are hardly any quests for E-rank adventurers at the moment. Then Ryoma collected many healing herbs. Suddenly, Eliaria's limmer bird appeared. She congratulated him on opening a second laundry. She also told her parents about his second laundry. They were all happy that Ryoma is successful with his business. She then wished him good luck with his laundry, and also told him that he shouldn't overwork himself. Suddenly, a huge smash boar appeared, chasing two adventurers. Then Ryoma was ready to fight against the giant smash boar. So Ryoma got his bows out of his item box. Followed he attacks the smash boar with his arrows. The monster didn't take any damage, and Ryoma wanted to beat up the smash boar alone. Ryoma then showed the smash boar his powerful martial arts skills. Ryoma mastered the fist of Buddha, and he managed to defeat him with a strong power punch. The boar fell over, and Ryoma was relieved that he was able to defeat him with ease. 
After the fight, the two adventurers thanked Ryoma for rescuing them. The adventurers said they are both unharmed, but one of their friend is badly injured by the smash boar. Ryoma said that he can use healing magic, and he wanted to help the two. Ryoma should wait for the two to return, so Ryoma uses the time and he calls his bloody slime. He sucked up all the blood from the boar. His bloody slime was an expert at sucking, so he was done in just a moment. Then the adventurers returned, and Ryoma wanted to treat the injured woman with healing magic. His heal slime was very helpful, and he could heal her instantly with ease. The adventurers then thanked Ryoma. After that, the adventurers wanted to give Ryoma a reward for saving them. Also they told him that he could sell the smash boar's materials at a high price. Ryoma wanted to share the reward for the boar's materials. Suddenly, the adventurers learned that he is just an E-rank adventurer. They were shocked and couldn't believe that he was able to defeat a smash boar as an E-rank adventurer. Later they returned to guild with the defeated smash boar. Miyabi was angry at Ryoma. The reason is she told him to avoid dangerous monsters who can hurt him badly. Then a worker from the adventurers guild showed up. He wanted to ask Ryoma about the monster accident. However, Ryoma was not punished for fighting a smash boar in self-defense. After that, Ryoma allowed Piora to buy all the meat from him. Suddenly a worker noticed that the meat was blood dried. Ryoma explained to them that his bloody slime is good at sucking blood, so Piora was impressed by his slime. Followed, he begged Ryoma to give him his slime. Ryoma replied that he can't grant his wish because he only has one bloody slime. In the days that followed, Ryoma reported that he had received all of the quest rewards. Then Piora showed up and asked if Ryoma had any ideas for a new dishes. Miyabi was ashamed of her father, who only ever thought about making money. Then Ryoma said that he have some ideas. So Ryoma started to be the next Jamie Oliver. First he cut the meat into small pieces and he peeled the vegetables. Then he roasted the meat with vegetables. As a result, he cooked pork with ginger that he knew from his old life. Miyabi thought his dish was delicious. Piora then also tried his dish and experienced his new dishes. Miyabi praised Ryoma and she said that he is a master chef. In the days that followed, Ryoma saw a large crowd. All people wanted to buy Ryoma's new dish. After that we see Ryoma in his laundry. Then Carla showed up, bringing some of the workers from Gimel. After that, Ryoma also met his new employees, and he introduced himself to them. Ryoma said that they can always ask him or Carla if they have questions. The new employees replied that they had already spent a trial day at his Gimel laundry. Ryoma was happy that Carla had found great employees. Next, Ryoma and his employees advertise his laundry. So Ryoma showed everyone the bamboo power of his slimes. A few days later, Piora and Miyabi admired that Ryoma is so diligent. Piora said that Ryoma is a true top G, and he will definitely get rich. Then Ryoma looked at his new laundry, and he recalled the memories of his old life. He was happy that he had met so many new and nice people in his new life. He then opened his bamboo forest laundry and wrote a letter to the Jamil family. He said his second laundry is now open too, and he's glad his laundry is a huge success. In the evening he thanked his employees and wished everyone a nice evening. The next morning all employees were called to him. Ryoma wanted to say goodbye. All his employees said they will work hard and he should take care of himself. Then Miyabi also said goodbye to Ryoma. She wished him good luck to become more successful. Suddenly, Ryoma asked her for a favor. He wanted Miyabi to befriend Eliaria at school. So Ryoma said goodbye to his friends and he made his way back to the town of Gimel. Then Ryoma received a letter from Eliaria. She told him that she has to go to school soon and she is currently practicing controlling many monsters like him. She learned to control Limor birds better. She also wished him continued to success. We then see Ryoma wanting to show Merchant Serge new goods that he found. Then Serge told him about his favorite hobby, to build cars like Fast and Furious. Ryoma saw a toy car that could move with magic. Serge said that the power source of the Hot Wheel is magic. Then Ryoma found out that a toy car race is held annually in the capital. Merchant Serge was a fanboy of Fast and Furious, and he passionately showed Ryoma his collected components. He managed to pique Ryoma's interest, and he wanted to hear more about the magical objects. Later on, Ryoma learned that his cleaner slime had been eating charcoal in his absence. Callum apologized to Ryoma for not paying attention. In addition, Callum also reported that his cleaner slime hasn't eaten dirt since then. Ryoma wasn't angry with Callum. He then said that he was grateful because he watched the slime so closely. This is how Callum learned that the slimes evolved through new nutrition. Callum wanted to write down everything about his cleaner slime had eaten. 
The following evening, Ryoma wrote Eliaria a letter. She was surprised about his cleaner slime ate charcoal, and she told him to report her more about the new ability if his slime evolved. She also wished him lots of fun exploring the magic item market. The next day, Ryoma told Callum that he was returning to his hometown for a while. Callum replied that he will continue to take care of his business in order to remain that Ryoma still be the top G of Gimel. Then Callum learned that Ryoma's hometown is the Great Forest of Skulls. He was shocked because only dangerous monsters lives in the forest, which only strong adventurers can defeat. Ryoma laughed and said that he would like to increase his rank. Also, he wanted to go back to the forest to test his power against the monsters. So Ryoma entrusted the laundry to manager Callum. In the afternoon, Ryoma visited the guild, and Meilen was happy to see Ryoma. Ryoma then asked her for advice, but a new employee had problems. Meilen immediately went to help the new employee, because she was overwhelmed with the situation, so she sent the guys out to do their quests. Then Meilen wanted to introduce Ryoma to the new employee. That's how Ryoma found out that Palma is new working at the guild, and he was happy to meet Palma. Following this, Meilen asked Ryoma for a favor. As a result, Palma was allowed to take over Ryoma's case. So Ryoma told that he wants to increase his rank. He gave Palma a list of monsters. She looked at the list of monsters, and Ryoma need quests with hunting the monsters on the list. Also Ryoma needed more information about the monsters in the Great Forest. Meilen was worried about Ryoma, but he told them that he grew up there and he forgot to take important things from his previous home. Meilen understood his request to return to the dangerous forest. Palma then prepared the paperwork for Ryoma's quests. Then Meilen said that she finally understood why he is so strong. Palma then showed up with the contracts for rising his rank, and Ryoma immediately signed the papers. Ryoma was able to start increasing his rank, and he stashed an item in his item box. Meilen was happy for Ryoma that he had now signed all the contracts. After that, Meilen showed Ryoma quests to increase his rank fast. Palma said a customer ordered using Amazon Prime, but Amazon didn't have enough suppliers. So Palma said she thought Ryoma wanted to deliver the package because he can use the item box spell. Ryoma accepted the package delivery to Kelaban because that's where the magic item market is held. Two days later, Ryoma arrived in the town of Kelaban, and Ryoma learned that six different magic item markets would be held tomorrow. He then delivered his package to a workshop. A man appeared, and he learned that Ryoma was delivering his order. The man thought his package wouldn't be delivered on time, and he thanked Ryoma. Damon then signed Ryoma's delivery papers. When Ryoma wanted to leave, the man stopped him. He invited Ryoma for a cup of tea, which he tried immediately. Ryoma thought the tea is very tasty, and asked which leaves the tea was brewed from. He found out about a new type of tea and thanked him for serving him delicious tea. Then Merchant Serge showed up. The workshop owner was surprised that the two are friends. Then Ryoma told that he delivered a package to Damon for the guild. Ryoma then learned that his friend Serge was doing business with Damon. After that, Damon wanted to show Serge his finished projects, and he also offered Ryoma to see his finished treasures. So they went to the workshop, and Damon showed his cars. Damon was a mechanic, and he made the new AMG Maybach version. Ryoma was surprised that he can build cars. Suddenly Ryoma spotted a G-Wagon that was worth several hundred thousand dollars. Serge was surprised that he can repair a G-Wagons. Damon then revealed that he is currently saving money so he can buy his grandson a car in the future. Ryoma and Serge learned that his grandson might become the next Elon Musk and has the skills to build electric cars. After that, Ryoma received the self-made magic item built by Damon's grandson as a gift. Serge said that Ryoma should keep the device. Then Ryoma said that he still has to find a place to stay because he wants to see the markets tomorrow. So Serge offered to show him a great inn where he currently lives. Then we see Ryoma, he got a room in the same inn where Serge was living. So they arranged to meet up for dinner. Meanwhile, Ryoma wanted to build a slime coin miner. Suddenly Serge came to pick him up for dinner. While eating, Ryoma learned that he couldn't make a slime coin miner, but he just managed to create a small music box. The music box was able to play Roddy Rich's song. Serge was impressed by the song The Box. He said that every person should listen to the song. Then Serge suggested that he should start a business with his music box. Suddenly dinner was brought, and they got steak with some side dishes. After dinner, Ryoma took Serge for a walk, and he said he could ask Damon to make the music boxes. Ryoma didn't want to cause problems for Damon. So Serge replied that Damon has three apprentices, and he would be happy to earn more money. Just before his bedtime, Ryoma wrote a letter to Eliaria. He said that he made a music box, and he will open a new business. The next day, the magic item markets opened, and Ryoma looked around the town with Serge. 
They then visited Damon together. He presented his new Hot Wheels and engine components. Then Damon's grandson wanted to meet Ryoma. Ryoma met little Elon, and he wanted to play with Ryoma. Ryoma then played with him when they played a game. He noticed that little Elon was bored because he haven't many toys. Ryoma wanted to build him a toy, and he asked permission to use the bucket. Followed Ryoma got some materials from his item box, and he built him a Beyblade Stadium. Meanwhile, Serge showed Damon the new invention of Ryoma. He was willing to mass produce the music box for Ryoma. Then we see Ryoma, he showed Elon how to spin the Beyblades. Elon couldn't get the Beyblade to spin, so Damon showed his Beyblade skills, and he said, let it rip. Ryoma was impressed, and Damon said that he is a big Beyblade fan. So Ryoma decided to give him and his grandson the Beyblade Stadium as a gift. Everyone was happy, and Ryoma reported to Eliaria about what was happening on the magic item markets. A few days later, he arrived back in Gimel, and he was happy to see his slimes. Ryoma wanted to go to sleep, but his cleaner slime evolved into a deodorant slime. Ryoma looked at the new abilities, and his new slime could absorb disgusting smells. The next day Ryoma talked about his newly evolved slime, and his deodorant slime made juice that could absorb disgusting smells. He intended to use the bags in his laundry. Later Ryoma was in the Gimel mine and he produced food for his slimes. His metal and iron slimes then played with each other. Suddenly, an iron slime appeared, and Ryoma got a great idea. He transformed his slime into a sword. So he tested the usefulness of his slime, and Ryoma was able to successfully create a sharp sword. The next day at the laundry, Callum said he should sleep more and do a break when he experiment with his slimes. Callum worried about Ryoma's health. Suddenly Mia appeared, she had problems with the new smell's absorbing bag. Ryoma realized that maximum absorption capacity had been reached, so Ryoma replied that he will bring her new absorbance later. Mia thanked him and wished him every success in the production of the miracle cure that could absorb disgusting smells. After that, Ryoma saw that other children had a problem. Ryoma wanted to help them, and he offered to fix their cart. Ryoma then ordered his sticky slime to repair the cart. The kids were impressed that Ryoma is the same age and is a monster tamer. He then learned that the two boys are adventurers. They only accepted G-rank quests to get some money with the other children's. Ryoma learned that they are children from the slums, and they can earn some money through the G-rank quest. Then Beck thought that Ryoma was looking down on them. Ryoma replied that he misunderstood him. Then Ryoma gave them a magic item so that the garbage would stop smelling. Beck and Wiss thanked Ryoma for the great help. Beck then showed Ryoma the church, because they were allowed to clean the church once a month. As a reward, they get delicious candies from the guild. Ryoma was surprised and happy to help the kids clean the church. Suddenly, he was called to the gods, and he got to know a new god. Ryoma wanted to introduce himself, but the god Felnavilia already knew his name. He found Ryoma very interesting, and Ryoma remembered that god Tekken told him about Felnavilia last time. Subsequently, Ryoma was asked about Japan and his hobbies. Ryoma wanted to answer his questions, but Felnavilia tested Ryoma. Felnavilia felt that he isn't lying and that Ryoma is a good person. So Felnavilia told that he met many evil peoples before. Then he said that he thinks Ryoma is a nice guy, and God Felnavilia was happy to have met Ryoma. Following this, Beck said that Ryoma should do his job properly. Wiz replied that he doesn't have to be so strict with Ryoma. Followed the church was cleaned up. Then Ryoma found out that after cleaning the church, they get candy and fight training lessons from the guild. Suddenly, Guildmaster Worgen appeared. He was surprised to meet Ryoma. Ryoma said he helped to clean the church. Beck and Wiss couldn't believe that Ryoma is an adventurer too. Then they were shocked when Worgen said that Ryoma is an E-rank adventurer. After that, Worgen trained the children from the slums. Ryoma realized that Wiz had a lot of physical strength, and he is very strong for a kid. Beck then attacked the guildmaster, and he was instantly defeated by Worgen. Worgen said Beck should attack from the blind spot. Meanwhile, the younger kids fought against Ryoma's slimes. Ryoma thought it would be good practice for the kids. Suddenly, Worgen challenged Ryoma to a fight. Worgen immediately attacked Ryoma, and the others were surprised that Ryoma is very strong. After the fight, they said goodbye to Ryoma. Then Ryoma was praised for his great help, and Worgen offered him a job as a teacher. Ryoma declined, fearing he is too inexperienced. Worgen accepted Ryoma's decision, and he praised him again. He said that Ryoma is a treasure for the city of Gimel. Ryoma was happy, and he wanted to keep helping the city of Gimel and the people in need. On the way home, Ryoma received a letter from Eliaria. Eliaria told him that she is learning to bake delicious desserts, 
She was looking forward to eating cake with friends. She also said that someday she will be able to bake delicious cakes to serve him. Ryoma was happy about the letter from Eliaria, and he hoped that she will find a lot of friends in the new school. A few days later, Eliaria reported that she will soon be moving to the academy. She was nervous and told Ryoma's that his letters always cheered her up. Then she wished Ryoma a lot of fun at Foundation Festival of Gimel. Ryoma was happy about Eliaria's letter, and he remembered Carla's words. So Ryoma thought about what he could send to Eliaria. He thought of giving flowers, vouchers, or perfume. Suddenly he had a great idea for Eliaria. He then decided to give her something self-righteous and began using his alchemy skills to make soap for his crush. Ryoma finished to create the soap in a short time, but he wanted to give her something special. So he produced some soap that looked like their monsters, that they already have tamed together. Afterwards, Ryoma asked his security guard Dolce about the festival. He told Ryoma that soon there will be culture festival in the town of Gimel. Ryoma was surprised and grateful for the information from Dolce. Ryoma said that the other employees all moved to Gimel from other cities to work. Suddenly Callum appeared. He had received a message from his sister Carla. Ryoma learned that his cleaner slimes were multiplying in the town of Lenef. So Ryoma made his way to his second laundry, and he used a teleportation spell. Ryoma arrived in the evening, and Carla was waiting for him. However, the slime researchers reported that he got 75 more cleaner slimes. Ryoma immediately tamed his new slimes. After that, he asked about the results of the slime's research. Ryoma was impressed by the reports from Robilia and Tony, who summarized all observations in detail. Ryoma was happy that they found out how to use the propagation in a controlled way. So Ryoma spent the night talking to his employees about the slimes. The next morning Ryoma went to visit his merchant friend Piora. Arriving at his company, he discovered a disgusting smell. Piora showed up and he said he got some stinky fish as a present. They were preserved and spread a foul stench. Piora asked for help, and he remembers saving Mia from a foul stench not long ago. Following this, Ryoma retrieved his new deodorant slime from his dimension home. Ryoma told Piora that his slime can absorb the stench. After that, his slime absorbed the stench, and Piora was very grateful. The fish no longer smelled, also he gave Ryoma some of his fish as a gift. Ryoma thanked his friend, and he still wanted to visit Miyabi. Then Piora replied that his daughter is on her way to school to learn more about the world. So Ryoma returned to his laundry in Gimel, and he was sought by Callum. He reported to Ryoma that the employee's parents brought him some gifts. Jane's parents wanted to thank Ryoma and were happy that Ryoma gave Jane a great job. Ryoma learned that he was given barley and an unknown grain called Samisa. Ryoma found the scent very refreshing like air waves. Top G Ryoma didn't want to accept such a big gift, so Jane replied that it was just the leftovers and he can accept it without a guilty conscience. Ryoma thanked Jane and he wanted to pay Jane's parents for their harvested grain. Jane didn't want to accept his nice offer, but Ryoma insisted on paying for it. Later businessman Ryoma had a meeting and Serge showed him a prototype of his music boxes. Serge said that Damon is happy to work for Gimel's number one businessman and they will soon be able to sell the goods. Serge suggested that they should sell their music boxes at the festival, because they get a lot of publicity from the Semloid group. Ryoma wanted to know more about the entertainment group, and Serge said they will perform at the empty place next door. Following this, Serge asked if the group could use Ryoma's laundry to change their outfits. After that, Ryoma heard a scream, and Ryoma ran to the kitchen. Then he saw Selma. She was shocked by the disgusting stench of the shapaya fish. Meanwhile the other girls were cleaning and they smelled the delicious fish dish. They immediately found out that they were using Samisa as a spice. Selma then said that the fish stank recently, and Ryoma immediately summoned his slime. He was able to neutralize the smell, and they managed to cook a delicious fish dish. When they tasted the grilled fish, Selma had the idea to use the new spice. In the evening everyone ate the delicious fish together, and they praised Selma for the delicious dish. Then Li Ling offered to cook her home dishes as well. Suddenly Callum had the idea that they should open a stall at the festival that sells the employees' hometown dishes. Ryoma was unsure, but Callum convinced him immediately. So Ryoma decided to sell street food at the festival with his employees. Dolce said he's happy to help and likes his idea. The other employees also loved the idea and were already motivated to do their best at the festival. Followed then, everyone cooked their hometown food and they practiced to cook delicious dishes for the festival. In the afternoon, everyone cooked delicious dishes that they wanted to sell on Foundation Festival of Gimel. They looked at the tasty dishes and were thrilled. After that, 
Callum told that the Semloid group is showing up today. Then Ryoma said everyone should have fun tomorrow on their party. In the evening, Ryoma was in his office, and Callum said they needed more staff in the short term. So Ryoma came up with a plan to solve their problem. Suddenly Serge knocked on his door and he introduced him to the leader of the Semloid group. Following this, Prinant said that he runs the Semloid Entertainment Group, and he was happy to meet Ryoma. He immediately felt that Ryoma is a genius and said he is Ryoma's fanboy. Prenance had received one of his music boxes from Serge, and he was happy to hear his great music. Then Ryoma offered his group to rest. Afterwards, Ryoma learned that their journey to Gimel was difficult. Ryoma was told that there are a lot of giant ants causing trouble near the city. As a result, Ryoma wanted to solve the problem, and he decided to visit the Adventurer's Guild on the next day. Prenance was amazed by Ryoma's kindness, and he said that the gods love him. Meanwhile, Ryoma was surprised that Prenance is a little bit crazy. The next day, Ryoma visited the guild, and he asked Palma for quests about giant ants. Palma immediately gave him the requested quest, and Ryoma accepted the quest to hunt the ants down. Following this, Ryoma summoned all of his limmer birds, and he ordered them to search for the ant colonies. So the birds flew looking for the monsters, and Ryoma used his shared sensation spell. Ryoma focused, and he found the ant colonies. Suddenly he spotted his two friends, Wiss and Beck. Ryoma went to his friends and greeted them. They were happy to see Ryoma again, and a girl wanted to know who the boy is. Beck introduced them to Ryoma, and they heard rumors about the slime tamer. Ryoma met the other adventurers from Beck's group. They all grew up in the slums and started a party together. Then Ryoma found out from Finia that they collect ants' carapaces. They were friends with a blacksmith and would get new equipment cheaply. Unfortunately, they had trouble finding the ants' colonies. Suddenly, Ryoma offered to help them, and they thanked Ryoma. As a result, Beck couldn't see any ant colonies, and Ryoma got his slimes out of the dimension home. The others were surprised by Ryoma's slimes. As a result, Ryoma ordered his slimes to line up in their positions. So the slimes sought out the monsters, and they lured the ants out of their hiding place. Suddenly, a monster appeared, and Ryoma defeated him instantly. Then more monsters appeared, and Ryoma said that they can fight now. Ryoma wanted to help Beck's group fight so they could gain combat experience. So the young adventurers fought the ants, and they showed Ryoma their fighting skills. Ryoma was impressed with their young age hunting monsters, and he complimented them all. Then the last ant appeared, and Ryoma finished him off instantly. After that, they looked for more ants, and they managed to defeat many ants by the evening. Beck was happy with their successful hunt. They then returned to the city, and they thanked Ryoma, because they wouldn't manage to defeat so much without his support. Also, they were happy that Ryoma protected them all along. Then Lumil said that tomorrow she wants to hunt monsters with Ryoma again. Beck said it's not possible, because he has to work. Suddenly Ryoma had an idea, and he took Beck and the other adventurers to his laundry. Ryoma offered them a job to help him out at the festival. Followed Callum looked at the children. So Callum accepted the children as part-time workers, and they thanked manager Callum and Ryoma. After their talk, Ryoma wanted to invite them to his celebration at the laundry, and they were happy to work for Ryoma. Then Ryoma gave a speech, and he wished all guests a lot of fun at his celebration. After that, all the cooked dishes were brought by the employees. Then Pranent said that his party is great, and Soldio apologized for his niece Maya's bad manners. Ryoma learned that the two are performing a show with swords. Then Maya showed up, and she said that she loves Ryoma's food. Ryoma was happy, and he told that they still have many delicious desserts. Meanwhile, Beck tasted delicious cookies, and the children from the slums loved the cookies too. They ate the cookies, and praised their great taste. After that, Beck and the others thanked Ryoma again. They admired him, but Wiss was sad. He asked Ryoma for advice, and Ryoma realized that Wiss was still afraid to fight against monsters. So Ryoma cheered Wiss up, and said that he has great friends, who can always support him. He said that he just needs to gain more combat experience, and one day, he will not be afraid. His friends also cheered Wiss up, and he was instantly happy. In the evening, Ryoma apologized for bringing the children from the slums without invitation. But Callum replied that it was a great idea because they are all nice kids. Afterwards, Ryoma wrote his crush Eliaria a letter that he had a lot of fun today. In addition, Ryoma wished her a lot of fun with her enrollment too, and he sent her a present. The next morning, Eliaria wanted to say goodbye to his parents. Reinhardt was very nervous because his daughter will now live independently. Elise and Reinbach said that Eliaria is ready, and they all laughed together. After that, 
Eliaria's family wished her a lot of fun at the academy, so she said goodbye to her parents, and she got into the carriage. Next she drove to the capital, and she received the gift of Ryoma. A month later we see Eliaria at her new school, and she is learning more about magic. Then she was deep in thought, because she was very sad. The class was too easy, and the other students avoided her, because she has the highest rank of a noble. Later Eliaria met an unknown person. She introduced herself as the eldest daughter of the Vilden noble family. Michelle was very polite, and Eliaria said she doesn't have to speak so polite. Followed Eliaria said that Michelle can call her Ellie, so they became friends. Eliaria then said that the class was too easy, and the other students avoided her. Michelle agreed, replying that she hadn't made any friends either. Eliaria thought Michelle was very popular. Suddenly Michelle told her that on the first day the other girls thought she was a prince. Meanwhile, Miyabi unwittingly listened their conversations. Following this, Michelle showed her a magic circle, and Eliaria immediately thought of alchemy. Michelle replied that she cannot use alchemy, then she said that she is trying to teach herself magic circle science. Suddenly Michelle asked why she immediately thought of alchemy. Eliaria replied that she has a friend who could use alchemy. Following this, Michelle added a mixture to the magic circle. Eliaria noted that Michelle is a passionate researcher like Ryoma. Then Miyabi got curious, and Michelle started her experiment. The magic circle glowed and sparks were created. Michelle spotted Miyabi and apologized for scaring her. Suddenly Miyabi said she had a message for Eliaria. Eliaria was surprised and asked by whom. So Miyabi replied that she had a message from a boy, and she didn't want to cause bad rumors. Then Eliaria found out that Ryoma is befriended with Miyabi. Then Miyabi said that she should wish her good luck in school from Ryoma. Suddenly Eliaria remembered the last evening with Ryoma. She was happy that Ryoma tried to help her make some friends. So Eliaria asked if Miyabi would like to be her friend. Miyabi was happy to be friends with Eliaria, and Michelle decided to befriend with the two girls as well. Afterwards, Michelle asked if they would like to form a team for practical training together. They were surprised and talked about the practical training. Everyone agreed with their new group, and Miyabi pointed out that they need six people in their group. They then sought out Riley, she was a noble daughter of the Silford family. Michelle said, she's a bit fussy about rules. She is also very capable and treats everyone equally. Followed then, Riley defeated her opponent in a fight. Michelle then told her that they want to form a team together, and she immediately accepted to join their group. The girls were happy, but Miyabi asked her if she was sure about the decision. Miyabi knew that Riley is the best swordswoman in school and was invited by many others. Riley replied that the others were arrogant and she liked to join their group. Then they thought about finding another person for their group. Suddenly they spotted a commoner girl. She was a craftswoman and they decided to invite her to their group. Kanan looked sad and she was surprised when Miyabi spoke to her. Suddenly, Miyabi invited her to join their group and she was delighted. She then thanked them for allowing her to join their group. Kanan comes from a famous family of craftsmen who create magical items. Followed she said she's a loser, so they learned that she can create magic items, but she needs the support of others because she can only use enchanting magic. Unfortunately, most nobles avoid her and she has been rejected by many people to join their teams. Michelle and the others had no problem with her ability and they wanted Kanan in their team. Kana thanked them and she was happy because everyone was so nice. The next day, practical training started, and Miyabi asked if they had any experience with outdoor camping. Eliaria and Riley said they had some experience with outdoor camping. Then the teacher said that class is about to start, so all the students went into the forest and they set up their tents. They should also learn to live alone without servants. Then we see the students. Most of them had problems with setting up their tents. Eliaria's team managed to set up their tents with ease, and they were also able to create a fire. Suddenly we see two girls, they asked another group to set up the tent for them. The other group refused, and they started arguing with each other. At night, Eliaria's group were surprised that many had difficulties with outdoor camping, so they went to sleep. The next morning a tent collapsed and a girl was injured. The girl blamed the other group that they are the guilty one. Suddenly they wanted to fight each other, but Miyabi stopped them. After that, Eliaria healed the injured girl, and they helped rebuild the collapsed tent. They later thanked Eliaria's team, but Michelle said they should apologize to the other girls. As a result, the two troublemakers apologized. Later, Eliaria said that they should all work together and support each other. Everyone agreed, and they built a toilet together. After that, Eliaria showed Kanan how to build a trap. 
Below, we see that the girls all gathered vegetables together. The students combined all their abilities so they could create a harmonious life together. When a girl was fetching water, she tripped and Eliaria immediately helped her. She said thanks to Eliaria and the girl saw flowers. Meanwhile, the teachers were very proud of the students, especially proud of Eliaria's team. So many beautiful days passed and they made a campfire on the last day. They all had a lot of fun camping and Eliaria's team all wanted to make lots of friends now. Suddenly, Eliaria remembered Ryoma's words. After that, a girl that Eliaria have helped showed up. She wanted to give Eliaria flowers that she had collected. Eliaria was very happy, and she wrote all her great experiences to her crush Ryoma. She also sent Ryoma tasty berries for his slimes. Then we see the bamboo forest employees planning to set up a stage. Callum said to Ryoma that the preparations will be done soon, and Ryoma was looking forward to the festival as well. He then watched the Semloid group practice their performances. Ryoma was impressed by their passion for demonstrating swordsmanship. Suddenly Guildmaster Worgen appeared. He wanted to thank Ryoma for hunting the ants. He then asked Ryoma to do a special quest for him. Worgen needed a person capable of using space magic, so he could only ask Ryoma. It was the perfect quest for Ryoma, and he accepted immediately. The next morning, Ryoma and the other adventurers were gathered in Worgen's office. They learned that they need the wood from the monsters that called Trance. Then they asked why they should defeat 300 of them. Worgen replied that they need the materials for the city renewals. So Worgen planned to build a new town for tourists outside the south gate. Meanwhile, Celia wondered why they didn't use regular wood for construction. So Worgen replied that the famous architect refused to use normal wood. Then Asahi was chosen to lead their team. They also learned that Ryoma uses his space magic as a support. Mia and the other adventurers liked Ryoma and were looking forward to fighting the monsters with him. Followed, they were on their way to the forest. Ryoma was happy to do a quest with his friends in a party again, because he had great memories of his last quest with them. Then they discussed together their plan to find and hunt the monsters. So Lipen said that the monster's weak point is their face. Then Celia asked if they were easily distinguishable from normal trees. Lipen replied that they can feel their magic, because the monsters are magical beings. In the evening, Mia set up the tents, and she saw Ryoma getting things out of his item box. He showed their folding chairs, and he had taken a table as well. Mia and the others were surprised by Ryoma, and Mia praised him. She said he is a genius, and Ryoma was flattered by her kind words. They then discussed their strategy to fight the monsters. Then Asahi tried to cheer Ryoma up, because he noticed Ryoma was tense the whole time. So he said that Ryoma can relax, and they all will support him. Then Walana and Mizelia said that they will help out in case of trouble. The next morning they started their quest, and they went into the forest. Later, Lipen spotted a trant, and he ordered to start attacking. Ryoma also senses the magic, and the adventurers attacked the monster. They immediately defeated the tree, and Ryoma collected the materials with his slimes. Following this, Lipen opened his dimension home, and they immediately wanted to hunt more trants. After that, Lipen discovered three more monsters, and the adventurers ran to the monsters. All adventurers attacked the trants, and Ryoma supported them with wind magic. Following Ryoma was allowed to fight against a trant too, and he bravely dodged the attacks of the monster. Then Ryoma defeated them with a clean cut. Suddenly Lipen realized that something is weird. But first they wanted to take a break, and Ryoma sensed something suspicious in the forest too. In the afternoon they had lunch, and Asahi praised Ryoma for his good work. Then Celia asked Ryoma about his weapon, and he replied that he transformed his slime into a katana sword. The others were amazed by Ryoma's skills as a slime tamer. Suddenly, Mizelia discovered a new type of slime. Ryoma learned that the slime called a fluff slime, and he has the ability to fly. Then Lipen used his new space spell, which teleported the slime to him. He wanted to help Ryoma tame the slime. As a result, Ryoma tamed a fluff slime, and he checked out his new slime's abilities. Ryoma learned that he has a multiplication level of 8. Lipen explained more about his new fluff slime. Meanwhile, Mia said that she likes to see Ryoma's playing with the slimes. So Ryoma blushed at his friend's words. After that they went to the forest and they sensed a dangerous aura that was very strong. Lipen noticed that the trees have disappeared from their location. He suspected that a high-level monster had appeared. Then their adventurer's party began hunting the trance. They fought many monsters and supported each other. Suddenly, Walana was injured. Ryoma protected the two in time. After that, Ryoma attacked all the trees, and together they managed to defeat the trees. Then they went deeper into the forest, 
and they hunted down many monsters. Suddenly, Ryoma stuck his sword into the ground, and he summoned all of his metal slimes. Ryoma turned his slimes into axes, and he threw the axe at the trance. So all adventurers and Ryoma managed to defeat the monsters quickly. Suddenly, a strong trant appeared, who was stronger than any other. Lipin said it's an elder trant, so they started to fight the elder trant together, but his slimes were frightened by the elder trant's magic. Ryoma sent his slimes back to his dimension home. After that, the trants protected their boss and they attacked the adventurers. Following this, Ryoma created a concrete floor and they got ready to attack the monsters. However, all adventurers fought the trants and the axes were rusted by the elder trants' attack. Lepin and Asahi couldn't believe their weapons were useless. Suddenly Ryoma had a plan and he transformed one of his slimes into an axe. Ryoma then attacked with his high-quality metal slimes and he managed to hurt the monster. So he gave his friends the new weapon to fight against the elder trant. Ryoma transformed his slimes into a powerful morning star weapon. He then attacked the elder trant and the boss monster was weakened. Then he throws his weapon at the boss monster again. Also, a treasure chest appeared. Then Ryoma was praised by Asahi, and he said that Ryoma is a great person. In the evening they celebrated their victory together, and Ryoma served his friends fried vegetables. Mia and the girls said his food is delicious. Then Lipin said that the buried magic stones were a surprise. Meanwhile Asahi was crying, because he was drank the soup and Ryoma told him about where he get the miso. After that they enjoyed their dinner together, and Ryoma had a lot fun with them. The following day, Ryoma and his friends returned to Gimel, and he wondered if the preparations for the Foundation Festival were ready. Asahi noticed that Ryoma was deep in thought, so Asahi said that in town, he can immediately check on his business. Following this, Lipin offered that Ryoma could transfer the collected trance wood to his dimension home. After that, Ryoma was deposed, and they said goodbye to Ryoma. Meanwhile, everyone worked on preparing the stage for the Semloid group. Dolce immediately greeted Ryoma, and he went to check out the stage, which was being built in his absence. Ryoma was surprised, and he asked how they were able to set up the stage so quickly. Following Dolce and Fiona told him that members of the Semloids set up the stage in just two days. Ryoma was impressed, and he learned that the Semloids also helped them set up their stables. Suddenly Pranins showed up, he said everyone should have fun at the festival. After that, Callum wanted to discuss something important with Ryoma. Ryoma found out that they forgot to choose drinks for the delicious dishes. But Ryoma didn't understand the problem, and Callum explained him everything. They wanted to offer an exotic drink, but they had no idea. Then they got the idea to sell Ryoma's tea, that he every day drank. He replied that he didn't have enough tea leaves. So Ryoma tried to come up with a solution for their problem. As a result, Ryoma made barley tea that no one knew. He said that they have the grains from Jane's hometown, and can use them to make delicious tea. Jane was surprised that they can produce delicious tea from the leftover grains. Followed every tried Ryoma's homemade Lipton iced tea. They thought Ryoma's Lipton iced tea was delicious, and thanked them for the great idea. Then Ryoma said that all they are almost ready for the festival, and everyone should have fun. In the days that followed, they all cooked together, and Ryoma supported everyone in their work. Later, Ryoma wanted to create an ice sculpture for Pranunce. Suddenly Serge appeared, he wanted to show Ryoma the finished music boxes. Then we see Mia watching Ryoma, and she was inexplicably hiding from him. Meanwhile, Ryoma listened to the new song on his music box. Later, they all cleaned together and practiced the performance for the festival. Several days passed and the preparations were completed. Prenance was excited to perform a great show for the citizens of Gimel. Then Serge also said that he was looking forward to the festival. Suddenly Ryoma got tired and Callum appeared. He said that Ryoma should rest, and he shouldn't work so much. As a result, Callum immediately sent Ryoma home, because he was worried about his health. The next morning, Ryoma was playing with his fluff slime, and he got the idea to create a fluff coin. He knew that fluff coin is going to the moon. Suddenly he saw a dragon on the sky, and he knew they were from the city of Lenaf. In addition, he saw Piora riding on the dragon, and he immediately ran to the center of town. Arrived in the center of Gimel, he saw his friend Piora. He was surprised to meet Ryoma, and greeted him immediately. Ryoma then learned that he had an urgent order to deliver. Suddenly Asahi appeared. He was the orderer of the delivery. Ryoma told Piora that they are friends. Then Ryoma found out that Asahi bought miso, and he wanted to use them for the festival. After that, Asahi invited the two to Mia's house. Next, Mia was happy to see Ryoma, and she hugged him. Suddenly she noticed Piora, 
and she asked why he came to visit them. Suddenly Ryoma saw the two set up a booth for the festival, so they learned that a few days earlier, Mia wanted to eat delicious dishes from their Trant Quest journey. She wanted to ask Ryoma to cook her the dishes, but Ryoma was busy. The reason was she didn't want to give Ryoma more work. As a result, Asahi cooked Ryoma's delicious dishes for her. Mia loved Asahi's food, and she raved about his delicious dishes. Mia convinced Asahi to present his dishes on the Foundation Festival Day. Later, Piora and Ryoma were allowed to taste the delicious mountain vegetables. They said the dish is very tasty, because Asahi practiced cooking diligently. Suddenly they said that they also want to sell rice with miso soup, but they have some problems, because the guests prefer eating by walking. The two had no idea, and Ryoma suggested a great plan. Ryoma pimped up their food so they can sell it at the Gimel Festival the next day. Mia liked Ryoma's idea, and they thanked him for the great help. In the evening he said goodbye, and he looked at the other booths of the festival with Piora. Piora was surprised and asked Ryoma's permission to sell his delicious dish in his hometown. Additionally, Ryoma gave him more ideas. After that, Piora said that he will visit him at his booth tomorrow. Meanwhile, the gods used the new YouTube god spell. They watched the Ryoma show, who become a top G in Gimel. Suddenly, Felnovia also appeared, wanting to watch the Ryoma show. Felnovia said that Netflix didn't have any good series at the moment, and Kufo agreed with him. Also, he preferred to watch the Ryoma show and wished him a lot of fun with his life. So in the evening, he had a party with his friends, and he wrote Eliaria a letter about his adventures. The next day we see the foundation festival of Gimel, and all booth have been set up. Ryoma looked at the city, and he was amazed. First, Ryoma visited his friends Mia and Asahi, who were selling Japanese dishes. They then wished Ryoma a lot of fun with his booth. Later, Ryoma saw his friend Prenence, who showed everyone the music boxes that Ryoma has prevented. Serge said they made enough music boxes for everyone. He was confident that many of the town's residents would treasure his music box. Then Ryoma looked at his own booth, and his shop attracted a lot of customers. Everyone loved the dishes from the employees' various hometowns. After that, Ryoma asked Dolce to help with the queue, and he was amazed that his booth could make so many people happy. After that, Jane asked Ryoma to order more stir-fry and Lipton iced tea in the kitchen. Meanwhile, the slimes cleaned the dishes, and Ryoma immediately ordered more supplies for the customers. Then more food were cooked, and Ryoma wanted to feed the waste to his scavenger slimes, who were very happy about the leftovers. After that, Worgen stopped by Ryoma's booth, and Bex said that Ryoma is now Gimel's top G. Suddenly he realized that the kids didn't have a break. As a result, he asked Worgen to show them around the town. Beck declined the break, but Carla and other employees showed up to support Ryoma. Ryoma then learned that the new employees were taking care of the laundry in Lenaf. Also, Carla was able to relieve Ryoma of the burden. Followed Carla told Ryoma to have fun at the festival, because he always works a lot. Before Ryoma went to see the festival, he wanted to finish the ice sculpture for Prenence. Suddenly, Prenence appeared, and he was impressed by Ryoma's ice sculpture. Then Ryoma wanted to see the city, but he was visited by Serge and Piora. The two merchants wanted to know more about his Lipton iced tea. So Ryoma told them about the secret of his tasty Lipton iced tea, and they immediately wanted contact for the grain supplier. Next, Ryoma told his employees that Serge and Piora have interests in their hometown's barleys. They thanked Ryoma, and they were very happy that Ryoma helped their family with the business. Later, Ryoma was admonished, and Carla told him to go have fun right away. Then Mia served her favorite friend Ryoma delicious Japanese dishes, and he was happy with the delicious meal. Suddenly, he spotted a little boy, who was lost. The boy was crying, and Ryoma wanted to help him to find his mother. Ryoma learned that the boy is not a resident, and Mia wanted to help too, but he just liked Ryoma. Asahi was laughing, and wished Ryoma good luck. So Ryoma helped the little boy Teo to find his mother. Ryoma told him that it's his first time to experience the festival, and that he was from a faraway place. Then he remembered the beautiful memories he had since he was born again. He was happy that he finds so many friends and experienced so much great adventures. Also became the top G of Gimel with his laundry and met his crush Eliaria. Suddenly, Ryoma ran into Gilesa, and he told her that he was helping a boy to find his mother. Meanwhile, he saw many of his friends, and Gilesa was glad that Ryoma enjoyed his life in Gimel. Followed, she asked him if he liked living in Gimel town, and he replied that he loved the city. Ryoma then handed Teo over to his mother, and she thanked him. 
So Ryoma said goodbye and went back to his booth. In the evening, many visitors watched the show of the Semloid group. They performed a great swordsmanship show with lightsabers made out of magic. Everyone was excited and they applauded. After that, Ryoma cooked many delicious dishes and he showed Selma how to cook yakisoba. She was impressed and Ryoma wanted to serve his friends many delicious food. Suddenly, Carla said that the Semloid group aren't at the party yet. Ryoma was looking for the Semloid group and he found them on stage. They were working on a statue of the gods that they like. She is named Manolia. Ryoma heard about god Manolia, but he hasn't met her yet. Ryoma learned that she is the goddess of wind and many singers admire her. Then Maya said that they would decorate the statue of the gods with memorabilia from each city, which they visited. At night, Ryoma gave a speech and said everyone should have fun. Then everyone celebrated the party for the successful festival day. Beck appeared, and he thanked Ryoma. The reason was all the children from the slums had received a lot of money from Ryoma, and they could buy many delicious dishes. Afterwards, Ryoma thanked Carla for always supporting him. Suddenly Maya appeared, and she wanted to perform with Ryoma at the last performance. As a result, Ryoma performed a sword dance show with Soldio and Maya. Everyone was excited and applauded for Ryoma's performance. Ryoma was very happy to have experienced such a beautiful day. The next morning, Ryoma visited Serge, and he asked Serge for a favor. He then wrote Eliaria about the good memories at the festival. He also sent Eliaria a special music box just for Eliaria, so she could hear a personal song by Ryoma. Then we see Ryoma starting his day again as Top G and Gimel.